God is good, and all the time, we got to do that again, because we want to lift it up that Jesus hears it in heaven, and Bill, who's resting in the arms of Jesus, will hear it. God is good, and all the time, we are so thankful as God gathers us together in moments like this, that we can celebrate the faith that Bill rests in today, that he lived out. Um, I hope I make it through. Thank you. Thank you. Those of you that are with the family, this has probably already been shared with you, but there's a word that keeps popping up. Only God can do this. Because last Sunday, after I got the word that Bill had passed, I didn't change a word of my sermon. But Bill fit perfectly in the sermon, and it was a legacy. And I, and I heard that uh, when Ed got to the airport and rented his car, Subaru, Legacy. <laughs> I bought a hat for my vacation, which starts after the service. <laughs> and on the inside of the ball cap, and yeah, by the way, uh, the message today is on Legacy. Um, because truly that defines Bill. That defines the way he lived his life. Um, that's the way he loved his family. That's the way he loved his church. Most importantly, that's the way he loved his Jesus. There are a few people you can say this about, but he's one. I, I went to the seminary at the time I did, and I was ready to graduate the seminary at the time I did to place me here uh, to meet Bill Sager. And we get to celebrate that faith in which he lived. Uh, also, we want to remind everybody that when we are finished with the worship today, uh, we will have uh, some little things to eat in the fellowship hall, plus it'll be a time to see pictures and, and time for the family to share their remembrances, but also anybody else that wants to share their remembrances during this time. So, as we begin this day, we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, source of all mercy and giver of all comfort, deal graciously, we pray, with those who mourn, that casting all their sorrows on you, they may know the consolation of your love through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite, I invite you to stand as you are able to sing the opening hymn on page three.
Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. I look up toward the mountains. Where can I find help? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let you fall. Your guardian will not fall asleep. Indeed, the guardian of Israel never rests or sleeps. The Lord is your guardian. The Lord is the shade over your right hand. The sun will not be down on you during the day, nor will the moon at night. The Lord guards you from every evil. He guards your life. The Lord guards you as you come and go, now and forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, whose mercies are new every morning, give us strength as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. May your rod and staff comfort us. Bring us safely to your mountain, where we will join with all the saints, proclaiming your praise, glory, wisdom, thanks, honor, power, and strength. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated. Our first reading is from the Psalms, Psalm 128. Blessed blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of the labor of your hands. You shall be blessed, and it shall be well with you. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Behold... Thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. The second reading is from Paul's letter to the Philippians in chapter 4. Finally, brothers... Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly. That now at length you have received your concern for me. You are indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And our gospel reading is from Mark chapter 9. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. And Jesus did not want anyone to know. For he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he is killed... After three days he will rise. But they did not understand the saying and were afraid to ask him. And they came to Capernaum. And he was in the house. And when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you discussing on the way? But they kept silent. For on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve. And he said to them, If anyone would be first... He must be last of all and servant of all. And he took a child and put him in the midst of them. And taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let 
that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How oh, precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior, has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's amazing how that word just keeps res resonating after last week for me. Um, because we always hold that sense of legacy up, la leaving a legacy. And, and, and too often it's in the sense of, I think, what the disciples in the gospel text were talking about along the road. And it's amazing, they did it out of earshot of Jesus, but Jesus still knew what they were talking about anyway. They were ashamed that what they were talking about was, who's the greatest among them? 
And I think too often in our world, especially when we gather at times like this and, and look at what is greatness, we end up falling into the trap of the disciples. It's a discussion on my greatness and a focus on how that grace, greatness looks to other people. I can't say that about Bill Sager. All, although some of the ideas behind greatness, I would say he amplified at least far better than I could. For example, building things with his hands. I mean, we look around at this facility. Bill Sager is in this facility because of the work that he did with his hands here in this place. For me, my congregation knows, for me, anybody that can work with tools with their hands is a great man. I can destruct, I can't construct. But the world looks at those things that you build with your hands and say, oh, that's great. But we also know that what we just celebrated a few weeks ago with the 20th anniversary of 9-11, those great things that you build with your hands can come crashing down. Also, uh, we, we look according to the world's definition of greatness is, is the accumulation of things through your finances. I've been out to Sager Lane. What a great view that you get on Sager Lane. And some would say, that's greatness. But even that, as we have heard out in California with the fires, as we have seen through hurricanes coming up through Louisiana, they can disappear pretty quickly. Oh, yeah, and the, the achievements that you have through your character, I would say Bill Sager had a character. He had a very strong character. I, I, I know that either right before an elders meeting or right a, after an elders meeting, that if I got a, song, a, a call from Bill Sager saying, Pastor, I need to stop into your office. Yes, Bill. Because I knew his character. But even with all those things as the world looks at them, as, as, as those assets are delegated, and, and yes, at the time of a funeral, you gather around for the reading of the will, and there are assets to be delegated, and some families have split up because of them. We, we find out that, you know, those things just don't last. They're uncertain because they can go just like that. But Bill knew more about legacy than just leaving one. Bill knew that there was only one lasting legacy. And he wasn't it. He knew that lasting legacy happened because of the one who made himself last of all and made himself servant of all. Because here Jesus, who was God, put himself in the form of this human body and experienced all the things that we're going through. The aches and the pains, the heartache and the suffering. And even when Lazarus died, we get this great emotional outpouring of Jesus where it just simply, actually in Greek it's one word, he wept. He knew the experience of taking on this human body. 
He knew that this was his calling from before creation. And he decided to take it on because he knew he needed to be last of all and servant of all to leave a lasting legacy. And the lasting legacy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is through his death and resurrection. Bill knew that. In fact, Ed, were you the one that told me that his favorite celebration was Easter? By the way, did you catch the last hymn? We got an Easter hymn in here. Uh, because Bill knew that that was the only lasting legacy. Because through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, there are assets that he has delegated not only to Bill, but to you and to me. And these are, these are assets of Jesus Christ that are lasting for us. They are, they are assets that are physical and they're spiritual. They are a word, a book. But boy, when the hearing of that, those words come upon you, it's the Holy Spirit that stirs you. Bill knew that. Bill, when he came to the Lord's table, he knew it was simple bread and wine. But it's more than that. It was the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which brings us forgiveness, life, and salvation. And it not only was just something physical and spiritual, it's for now and into eternity. It definitely is a lasting legacy that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gave to Bill that he now rests in and also gives to you and to me. But the one thing Bill knew in leaving a legacy was it wasn't his stuff. But instead, the lasting legacy was in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but now we have an ongoing legacy. And as Bill lived in that, he lived because he received his Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And by receiving his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he also received the one who sent him. And in receiving him, and as we receive him, now Jesus Christ stands there with us. And just like Bill as he, as he did for this congregation, as Bill did for this community, as Bill did for his family, as Bill did for each and every one of us. He gave us an ongoing legacy that is grounded in Jesus Christ and Him alone. Because whether we realize it or not, Bill because of his faith, became an asset for the kingdom of God. And as he became that asset for the kingdom of God, he did kingdom of God stuff. Stuff that probably some people thought he was foolish in doing. I know that for a fact because I know our district said, you know, I don't think a Lutheran church is going to fly in Blairsville, Georgia. 31 years later, we're still here and kicking. And really, it was grounded in Bill and Helen Sager of them listening to their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and doing what, they, what no man thought that they could do. Because it's not the greatness of the world that decides things. It's the, the greatness of Jesus Christ, his lasting legacy that lives in Bill in that ongoing legacy that lives in all of you and all of you. 
And so as, as we receive such a child, as Bill received such a child, when he welcomed me that first day, as a vicar, I wasn't even a pastor. I was a pastor in training. And there were a few people along the way that trained me, I hopefully trained me right. And Bill Sager was one of those guys. Because it was the lasting legacy of his Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that impacted his life, that made him an ongoing legacy, that made him an asset for the kingdom of God. Because he received such a child. He received such a child. He received such children. Because Bill was always there, ready at the door, with a smile, with a handshake, with that gentle laughter. Leaving a legacy, not as the world defines it, because it didn't come with the work of his hands. It didn't come in his accumulation of finances. It didn't come by his achievement of character. But it came because Bill Sager was and still is a child of God. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. We continue our worship with the prayers uh, that are found printed on page 5 of the bulletin. O God, the Father of compassion, shower your mercies on this family and all who mourn the death of our departed brother Bill. O God, the Son, dearest Jesus, our good shepherd, make your rod and staff of comfort known to those who mourn. May your goodness and love revealed in your word and sacraments be known in their daily lives. Guide them in your paths of righteousness as they continue in the pilgrimage in this world and in their walk of faith alongside Jesus Christ. O God, the Holy Spirit, give courage and faith to those who mourn that we may have strength to meet the days ahead in the assurance of a holy and certain hope, in the communion of your church, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those we love who have departed in faith. Help us in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe in and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks that by his death, he destroyed the power of death. And by his resurrection, opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also. And that neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And as our Lord has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Stand as you are able for the singing of the hymn.